Well, welcome to my channel. You know what? Um, I really love the, the Mego Star Trek line. It's fabulous, right? And the Klingon that they offered is just, wow, this is just spectacular, isn't it? You know, Kang. Um, but another Klingon that I really, one of, well, actually my favorite would be Kor. And I found out that uh, Mego did release a Kor or the opportunity to buy a Kor during that Tops uh, promotion. And of course, I missed it. So I'm online the other day and I find a, a sculpted head in resin of core. And so I thought, well, I gotta try this. Now, I don't really do resin heads. You know, I, I get all my heads from Dr. Migo. I, I really like those, those sculpts and the, uh, the casting process. But I thought I'd try a, um, a resin head just to see what happens. And uh, I hope you come along with me on that journey. Now here are the materials that we're gonna be using. Um, of course, get yourself some good brushes with some very, very Fine tips. Those are going to be for the eyes, eyebrows, things like that. <clears throat> I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade to kind of show off a, a technique where you can create uh, or accent, actually, the lines in the face of the sculpt. It really is a cool effect. Uh, here's a, a different shade of uh, flesh tone. This one right here is called Cadian Flesh Tone. And that's a Citadel paint that I had. Now, the Klingon has a little bit darker lips, and you can see this is almost a, a brown. So I'm going to be using that for the lips. And then I've got some black. Uh, black is, for the majority of the painting, it's going to be the uh, hair, the eyebrows, uh, for the mustache, and, and the beard. So get yourself a dark, dark paint. This is really dark. I usually use abysmal black, but uh, I'm running a little low, and uh, so I, I got this instead. <clears throat> Now this right here has been um, the best purchase so far for this for this Klingon build. Uh, it's called uh, Krylon Color Master, and it's a paint and primer. And the color is brown boots, and this really kind of matches the the uh, the color of the figure itself because I'm using a Klingon body, and so this this paint color is pretty much spot on and it's going to help you out a, a lot so uh, make sure that you you can get this if you can I, I looked it up online and they have a, a lot of different varieties of this uh, uh, brown boots and this one's actually a satin so I would probably stick with a satin if I could uh, but they offer this in a lot of different uh, varieties of paint this one's a paint and primer and um, it's for plastic I don't know if that made a difference but uh, it, it really did uh, really did help out a lot and I got it at uh, apparently Hobby Lobby I, this, this was in my garage I, I, I didn't get it for this uh, particular uh, uh, build but it worked out great and then of course I always kind of like finish my products with this matte clear enamel this this makes sure that the paint is set and protects it so I think that this is a very necessary step and another thing you know I don't know about resin heads um, I had some difficulty getting the resin head on the body. It might have been because when I glued the uh, the little stump on there to, to keep the, the head in place, you know, where it, where it rota rotates around the neck, um, I might have had some, some extra epoxy glue seep out or something, but it just didn't fit well. So I had to get this, um, this rasper thing from my garage. Uh, to make the hole just a little bigger. I mean, it wasn't a lot bigger, but I had to I had to kind of fool with it, and I've never really had to do that with any of Dr. Migo's stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Um, other than that, I think that's about all that we'll need. Well, here's the head that I'm going to be using for my custom Klingon core. As you can see, it's a little different than what I've used in the past. This is actually a resin print as opposed to a casting. Now, as a result, this is going to have to require a, uh, an additional step or a process uh, of priming. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime it with a brown Krylon paint uh, just to um, kind of make sure that the paint I'm using adheres to it properly once I begin. Here I am painting the piece. I don't want to get too thick of a uh, coverage on it. I just want to make sure that it's nice and even. That's why I'm painting it at a distance and I'll be doing it in several different steps. Here's the primed figure. You can see uh, it looks great. The, now the paint that I use, that, that Krylon paint, um, actually matches the, um, the body color very well and I think it's going to make a great base to lay down uh, the paint that I'm going to be using today. I'm going to go ahead and start with the eyes as I usually do. 
So if there's any sort of problem, I can get that uh, taken care of before I go too far. Okay, I'm gonna begin painting the whites of the eye. Now these, these eyes are very, very narrow. So um, I'm using my thinnest brush. Now the, the actor uh, that this sculpt is based off, off of John Colicos. Apparently, um, the producers over at uh, at CBS, you know, the guys in charge of uh, Star Trek, gave him a call and asked him, so what's the Klingon going to be like? And so he had a lot of input, not only with his own character, but the way the Klingons would be perceived, you know, um, you know, future episodes. Uh, originally, they had planned to have uh, Kor as a kind of like... Um, a continuing figure, you know, he'd have uh, continuing appearances in, in Star Trek, but um, he had some schedule difficulties and, and couldn't continue um, to reprise his role uh, as it was originally envisioned, but he did a great job on that uh, one episode. Well, I, I think he might have been in some of the, um, the newer ones, when I say newer, like the next generation, because there was a core character there and I think it was the same actor. I really didn't get into um, the next generation all that much. I guess I'm just a, uh, uh, you know, TOS guy, you know, the original series. But from uh, an interview I saw uh, of uh, John Colicos, he had kind of like thought of these Klingons as like the old Soviet empire, you know. And uh, he kind of patterned his character after that, kind of like a Genghis Khan. Guy. Well, that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and start with the black pupils. So um, that's what he had, I guess, kind of envisioned Core to be. It's, it's like um, a cross between Genghis Khan and uh, you know, Soviet um, Soviet soldiers. You know, what? I'm gonna let these dry a little bit before I place the black pupils in. So I'll be back in a second. And I'm going to work on the pupils. Again, you know, you always start in the middle of the eye. And you put a dot in the center and you work up. These suckers are pretty small. Get a little more paint on there. Hmm, looks a little small. Get a little bit more paint. I like to just Hmm, looks like I added too much water. Hang on. There we go. Looks good. Go ahead and get the other one. Trying to keep them in the relative uh, same space. Again, in the middle of the eye and then moving up. You just don't want to have a little dot there in the middle. And if you get a little on the upper lid, you can always go back and clean that off. Mm -hmm. Looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and let those dry and then I'm gonna get on the eyebrows, I think. You know what? I don't know, they look pretty good. I think I'll just take it to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the eyebrows. And these Klingons have some crazy eyebrows. Goes all the way across the top. And you can see it goes up, uh, has a little wild, <laughs> wild one there. And then it also, 
goes down and around. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a, a picture of John Colicos with his makeup and those crazy eyebrows. Actually, I think that's pretty good. I need to fill it in right here. Looks good. Get some more paint. I'm using again that um, very, very dark black. All right, let me thin it out a bit. Yeah, this is a fun figure to paint. I would uh, definitely recommend that you try it. Hmm, let's see, I lost. Very easy to trace. The sculpt itself has a lot of detail. Boy, <laughs> he looks evil, doesn't he? Okay, let's see if I can get his mustache now. You know what? I'm going to try the, the chin. There's like a little division there. Yeah, you can definitely see the, the influence of uh, Genghis Khan that John Colicos wanted for this character. You know, that conquering species. Klingon. You know, they made him a lot more alien looking with the uh, ridges and things. Um, I, I really never liked that look. I mean, Worf looked pretty cool. I will give him that, but... Um, you know, there's just a certain charm about the old, um, the old Star Trek series. As I said, these guys are, this miniature is pretty easy to paint. All the details are pretty well sketched out. You just have to... It's like a coloring book, basically. Just fill it in. It's looking good, huh? Yeah, um, I don't know. Maybe, well, uh, let's see. I was going to say, if you're just starting, maybe painting sculpted heads, this might be one to start with. But uh, resin, uh, you know, it's a little more difficult to get, you know, to work with because it's hard to get into the figure unless you get one of those... Um, those bodies from classic uh, TV toys because they have screws in the back and you can you can unscrew them I had a hard time getting this one into this like standard Klingon body because this is actually a standard Klingon body that uh, what I've done is I've I've um, you know cut off the the little stump there and um, drilled a hole that I could use for um, the resin head and pop that in there what do y'all think? I'm looking like core. Like I said, it's easy to paint though. I mean, you know, you just kind of like follow the lines. It's, it's not uh, hard at all. So far, this has been the easiest uh, sculpted head I've painted. Let me see if I can make these little chin accents a little more pronounced. I don't know. He's coming along quite well, isn't he? Let me go ahead and get started on the head. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch from my smaller brush to a larger brush. Let's see. Here we go.
yeah, you should, you know, uh, if you're watching this video, obviously you're interested in, in, you know, creating your own custom Migos, right? And I understand that they're coming out with a, a core. I don't know when. I had kind of seen that uh, somewhere. I don't know if it's going to be a Topps exclusive or what's going to happen with the core, but you definitely need more Klingons. I'm also looking at um, putting together one of the old um, Klingon heads with a new body and the new outfit. Because I think that would definitely be cool. He kind of looks like, I think it was Koloff. You know, the old Klingon. Looked kind of like Koloff. Try to get the little strands of hair. Uh, a viewer to my channel was like talking about an alternate way to to paint the hair and I think he posted it on one of the um, one of the videos I did um, I, I just I don't know I just can't you know once you get set in your ways it's, it's hard to change right I was going to try it on this video just to see what it was like but I, I don't know I just you know I'm an old dude. It's just like, you know, if it works for you, I say, great. Paint paint the, the way that you paint. Keep it comfortable for yourself, you know, because, you're gonna, you know, it might, it's going to take a while. So make sure that you're comfortable and that you're doing, you know, um, a technique that, that's comfortable for you and that you're familiar with so that, you know, you get the best job done. I, I'm actually liking this guy. He's looking pretty good. I was a little worried. I Like I said, I, I don't really like... Um, resin sculpts all that much those ones from Dr. Migo are really really nice so a little I don't know I guess hesitant to um, to try resin but it's actually working out pretty well the details pretty good I mean, you know, Dr. Migo's sculpts are, are really good too I don't want to disparage those because, you know, they're great but I had anticipated this being a lot more difficult than what it's been. <laughs> Let's just say that. I might try another one. Maybe a Tellarite. I saw a Tellarite. But the costuming on the Tellarite is going to be difficult to pull off. I might have to... It's not going to be, you know, screen accurate. It's going to be something that, you know, I, I think Tellarite might look like. So that might be my next one. Because I saw a Tellarite um, head... No resin head. And that might just be the next thing I do. I've been really having a good time with those monsters. I don't know if you guys saw my video on uh, Dr. Frankenstein. But, um, yeah. Was, that was a fun sculpt. I really enjoyed uh, customizing that. Somebody had recommended that I try uh, Dr. Pretorius, and I, I was researching it online, and I think I found, um, I guess, a solution to the Pretorius problem. <laughs> you know, but I don't know. I'm just not too keen on, on that character and probably won't do it. But I left a link in, in, in the corresponding video if you wanted to. I think it's an old man head from Classic TV Toys who just needs, a, I guess, a bit of a... A haircut, right? Maybe something um, wild. Oh, I'm off camera. I'm sorry about that. Might have to edit that out. Figure out the editing software. It looked pretty good. Like I said, this is a lot easier than I thought it would be. There's some really good detail on this um, on this resin sculpt. I guess 3D printing has um, has come a long way. I can't remember where I got this one. I think it was um, it was on eBay definitely, but I think it was reliving the past again or something.
Wow. Looking good. This is where you make a mistake when you get cocky. So, <laughs> focus and and you're thinking, oh yeah, this is easy, and I've got this, and then all of a sudden, disaster strikes. Well, I must say, this guy is looking good. Let me see if I missed anything. Right? Doesn't that look swell? I'm going to take them off camera, uh, kind of see if there's anything I need to fix. I might, you know, oh, you know what? I'm going to let this guy dry, and I'm going to add some Agrax Earthshade, because you know what? Uh, I noticed on the film, he had some, like, dirty makeup effects, right? And in my last video, I added some worry lines to my Dr. Frankenstein, and I had a viewer who wanted to know how I did that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you so you can, you can see how that process is done. And like I said, I, I'm just, just, look at that. that. That looks great. And this has been one of the easiest ones for me to paint, honestly. And it's turned out fabulous. Okay, so let me let, me let him dry so I can put the, uh, the uh, shading on him. Because it has to be completely dry or else it will kind of run. So I'll be back in a sec. I knew I forgot something. I forgot to paint the lips. So again, uh, on this one, I'm going to use like a, uh, a flesh tone that's actually a little bit lighter than what he's got on the skin. Because apparently that's, that's the look that was, um, that was done by the makeup artist for John Colicos. And once I get my Agrat's Earthshade in there, it's going to look good. Um, yeah, that looks great, doesn't it? Very thin lips. It's looking good. Can't believe how easy this guy is to paint. Let me go ahead and, and get the Agrax Earthshade and show you guys a technique I used with my um, Dr. Frankenstein last week. Now I diluted it for my Dr. Frankenstein. I'm just gonna put this on straight, straight in. You can see just the creases of the line. I'm just tracing them. With the Agrax Earth Shade. Let me go ahead and put a little more on my brush. Gives you that dirty look. Take a little bit off. You can see I'm just I'm just filling in the uh, the areas that have the natural creases in them already. Uh, make it between the chin. You know, if the figure looks a little too clean, this will dirty it up for sure. Let's see how that's looking. Let's see. Might have a little too much under the eyes. Let me get rid of some of that. forehead good might as well do his ears
And you see how I just kind of like went around to the, all the, um, the natural contours and the crease lines that were already there. And just kind of used uh, the Agrax Earth Shade as kind of like a, you know, an accent for those those creases. <laughs> uh, job done, I think. You know, I can't believe how easy this was. I'm going to have to try another resin head. Maybe it just got lucky. I don't know. But this guy seemed to be very, very easy to paint. Let me go ahead and get him in his outfit. I'm going to seal it too. Um, I'm going to put on some of the uh, you know, my clear enamel, right? My mat. Uh, just to solidify or keep the paint job from, from um, you know, set it, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and do those two things, and I'll be back. Boy, I just can't believe how easy that was. Something else. All right, see you in a sec. Well, here he is. I, I have uh, the matte enamel applied to his face, his head, just to preserve the paint job. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe how easy that was to do, and... Um, he looks great. Very, very pleased. Uh, you know, this will definitely not be my last resin head that I uh, that I paint. I guarantee that. 